Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dryer Days Art Studio. I'm Catherine. Thank you so much for being here today and watching this video. This obviously is the piece I will be working on. It is a two-tiered cupcake stand. Uh, you can find the molds for this and the hardware, the gold hardware that goes with it, at my store, dryerdaysartstudio.com, as well as all the products that I use in here. This was really, really simple. I only used a few products. I'm trying to show here by moving it around the fantasy film that I incorporated in there because you can kind of only see it from certain angles, so I wanted to try to show that there. And without further ado, let's jump right in. So here are the two dishes, and I really, really like these molds because as you could see in the video and the pictures before, they have a nice beveled edge. It's not just a flat mold. The fantasy film that I'm cutting right here is the Aurora fantasy film, which is available in my store. I do have several other colors and a few more colors coming. And in another video, I used the Aurora film and I kept it as one sheet, but on this one, I wanted to cut it into smaller shards to see how that would work. Those pieces are cut. I'm going to get my pigments and glitters ready and I'm only going to use three products in these. First is my matte white here, which I get a little in the cup. I break it up a little bit because sometimes the matte pigments are a little chunky going to spray a little bit of rubbing alcohol in there to make it like a paste and then it will be ready for resin. I'm also going to be using antique lace pigment that you can see up there and I'm going to be using my gold chunky biodegradable glitter which I love it's so pretty. And the resin that I'm going to be using for this piece today is Total Boats Tabletop Epoxy. I have been playing around with their tabletop epoxy and with their art resin, and I'm really loving this resin a lot, um, especially with my more functional art pieces. I do like to use the epoxies that are geared more towards a tabletop finish, just because this is functional art. We want it to be a little bit more durable. Probably won't be putting any hot mugs on these like we would coasters, so I didn't have to worry too much about the heat resistancy, uh, but this resin does have a great non-yellowing capacity. It is also scratch resistant. All right, and I always like to put a little bit of clear down, so I'm getting a little bit of a base here with just some clear resin using my EcoArt Solutions cups and their stir stick covers. Uh, there will be a link down in the description below where you can find EcoArt Solution products with a little discount code from me. Going to hit with just a little bit of heat here. Uh, I mention this a lot, but please do not use a torch or open flame on any of your silicone molds. It will ruin them. And honestly, I didn't need a whole lot of heat at all with this resin, which is really nice. And I'm just gonna move this around to get me a nice clear base before I start laying down my pigmented resin. I knew I wanted the gold glitter to really show up on the edges and that my white matte pigment is going to be very heavy and opaque and is going to kind of weigh that glitter down and I wanted you to be able to see it. So I'm going to start with the glitter and all of my biodegradable glitters, I test myself to make sure that they are solvent resistant and that they won't lose their color when added to resin. Uh, all my biodegradable glitters are on sale right now actually and I have just gotten a bunch of new colors. And now I'm going to drizzle on some antique lace. And the reason this kind of looks a little random and all over the place is because I know I'm going to put down that fantasy film. And so I wanted some open spots or some areas where you can see through the pigmented resin. So I'm just kind of getting real artsy and creative and abstract here and kind of putting this around in random spots. And now this is that white matte pigment. 
it is an extra step to have to um, add the rubbing alcohol and really kind of break it down and make it like a paste, but I find that when you add that rubbing alcohol in there, it really helps cut down on bubbles. It can give you some really nice effects with the white. And with the white matte pigment, dry pigment, you really get a beautiful opaque look and backdrop here. And again, I wanted to leave some open space. I don't want to completely cover because I did want you to be able to see that fantasy film. Uh, I could have probably been a little bit lighter handed with this because um, you can see the fantasy film. I kind of wanted you to be able to see it a little bit better. Um, and I will link that other video where I use the fantasy film in that other round dish. And you can really, really see the the Aurora fantasy film in there. Uh, but you can still see it with, these, with this piece. It does peek out a little bit. And so I'm just gonna kind of randomly place it down here on certain open areas where you can see it's still clear and there's not any pigmented resin. hitting with my heat to get any bubbles and the fantasy film is kind of like a cellophane and it will cinch up and change um, with a lot of heat so just be mindful of that and now you can see all of that resin has really moved down and around the edges of the mold here and so I am I actually mixed up a little bit more resin and uh, mixed it with my antique lace and my matte white again and we're really going to just work to fill in the rest of these molds here I just should mention too, be mindful when you're filling these. Now, there is a center hole for you so that uh, you can include that hardware and you don't have to drill any holes or anything. Uh, but I did get very, very overzealous with my filling and I ended up covering the hole on the bottom large dish there. And my husband had to drill a hole for me. So I will touch base on that again a little later. So, uh, just be careful and not cover the holes on these molds. have cured for about a day and a half and I'm going to come in and demold as you can see there uh, that I did completely cover the center hole there so uh, I am going to have to enlist my husband to drill a hole and you can use a little popsicle stick or something to kind of get these moving these are very very durable molds and they can become kind of heavy with all of that resin in there uh, so just use a stick or something to kind of get you started and then I gently like to come around the edge and work it slightly Oh, you can see how beautiful that glitter is. You can see some of that Aurora in there. And then yeah, just put the mold right back and you can use it again. And I'm going to do the same thing here with the smaller dish mold. I will mention that my husband said he used a quarter inch drill bit and a number 10 countersink. So that is all Greek to me. I have no idea what that means. Uh, so if you know, there it is for you in case you need that, in case you cover any of the holes here on the molds, just try not to cover them and then you can avoid that. But uh, he did drill that for me with a quarter inch drill bit and a number 10 countersink. And then you're able to just use that hardware and screw it into place. And here is your beautiful completed cupcake stand. I mentioned on Instagram, I think this would make just a lovely piece for a bridal shower or even a baby shower, depending on the colors. It's just so elegant and light. 
and delicate and beautiful. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please check the video's description for all the products used. Every single thing in here you can get from Dryer Days Art Studio. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Find me on Instagram at Dryer Days. And until next time, keep on pouring. Thank you.